All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's get ready to paint this old timey tin robot. Uh, I love these toys, these old fashioned toys, the wind up toys, you crank them and they kind of do little things. They're kind of cool, kind of kitschy. They're coming back in style. I really love them. Uh, let's go ahead and get busy painting one of these. Oh, here he is. So I've gone ahead and drawn this out already on my page. There's the reference photo that I'm going to be using. If you uh, are a member of my Discord server, you can find this image there for you. Uh, as we get started, I'm just going to tell you I'm using some Strathmore 400 watercolor paper. My paints are M. Graham paints. I'm happy to talk about these at any time in the video that you want. And the brushes, the same ones that I've been using for a while, are, what are these? These are King Art brushes, the 9020 series. So uh, with that, I'm gonna go ahead and get started. Thirsty for a brew is here. Hello, Thirsty, welcome to the stream. I've got some blue mixed on my on my palette here, but I'm going to go ahead and grab a little bit of this uh, cobalt blue and just throw in that blue mixture. I think this cobalt blue is kind of what I'm going to use as the base of this robot. I want to give oh just a a light layer of paint on the body of this guy. I'm not going to worry about too much other than just getting some paint down uh let's see something like this i just just paint the body of it i when if you ever watch other people paint and they paint and they leave a white space here and there for some highlights uh i look at that and i sometimes i like that and but usually i i'm like i don't i don't think that looks quite right i don't like leaving uh, white space for highlights necessarily. I'd rather put just a little bit of color underneath that. My own personal preference. And then, um, then when there is a highlight, it can be it's super light, but then there's just a little tint of color to it. I don't know why, I just seem to like that a little bit better. So I like to put a wash of color on all of my stuff first as I'm going through it. I've got to be careful to paint around a couple of dials here. I can paint a circle better than I can draw a circle sometimes. My circles come out as more ovals or crazy things. A couple of people are coming into the stream this evening. If you're here, stop by, say hello. Love talking to people. I love uh, hearing where you're from, what you've been up to. If you're willing to talk about art, I would love to hear that too. If not, just say hi or ask a question of me if you don't want to talk about your art. I'm always willing to talk about uh, my journey in art. Bicycle Repairman is here. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Always willing to talk about my journey in art. I'm willing to talk about any of my thought process. I'm willing to talk about uh, colors in any way, shape, or form. I'm certainly willing to talk about my supplies that I have here or supplies in general. So if you have any questions, anybody who's out there has any questions, throw those out there. Would love to... To be able to talk with you about that. Uh, and on that topic, talking back and forth is one of the things that I really like to do on my live stream. That's one of the things that makes a live stream so much fun is the conversation that we get to have together. As I'm painting. It seems as though every week our conversations uh, go off on uh, some interesting tangent. Not always where I think the conversation's gonna go. And uh, usually I think that's, that's good. <laughs> we don't always need to talk about what I want to talk about. If 
fact, most of the time, it's probably a good thing we don't just talk about the things I want to talk about. I'd like to talk about the things you guys like to talk about or have interest in. So please, if you, if you have any, throw questions out there. For those of you who are watching and are a member of my Discord community, I've put a couple of new channels up there make it easier for you guys to ask questions uh, of me if you wish there's a whole questions and answers channel out there where I will do my best to answer whatever questions you guys raise and it's not quite August I guess I'm kind of getting off center here let me do this a little bit let me move my camera back just a little bit then I can get in a little bit more comfortable position that might be a little bit better it's not quite August, but I have put the August challenge up there on my Discord server. The challenge for August is, what is the challenge for August? The challenge for August is beach chairs. That's what it is. A number of years ago, uh, I painted a chair just as a, as a, as a hoot. I thought it would be funny, and I painted it, hung it up in my office for a while, and everybody who stopped in my office uh, would stop and, and look at it and, and talk about the chair. Oh, I remember that, those chairs. You know, I painted one that had the, well, the one I painted had green and white straps uh, that went around in aluminum uh, frame chair you know we all had we all had uh, cheapo chairs like that back in the day there's nothing special about that chair other than the fact that like most things I paint it had some special connection with me some kind of remembrance for me and so I painted it and everybody else uh, you know they come into my office and they see all of my artwork and and I started to comment on it uh, so much so that uh, I was like, "Man, if everybody, if everybody likes this thing, I am gonna, I'm gonna friggin' put this up for sale on Etsy." I put it up for sale and it sold uh, the next day, which, which I thought was extremely funny. Uh, I've now made it into a uh, a T-shirt. If you if you look down below, there should be a link to my store down below. I have some a few shirts for sale down there. It's it's you can see the image of it on one of those shirts, but uh, I just thought it would be fun to kind of revive that. I haven't painted a piece of furniture in a long time. I paint lots of things, but I haven't painted a piece of furniture in a long time. Time there we go. We got one coat on on there. Lab accident is here. Hello. I hope you're feeling better uh, this week than you were last week. Shannon C. Happy Wednesday. Happy Wednesday to you too. Welcome to the stream. Uh, so I uh, let me catch you guys up. I've just put a, a light, a light, light, a thin coat of cerulean blue down on this guy. That's going to be the base color for this robot. And any highlights that are going to shine through, you know, he's got some here on his metal of his arm. I don't know, there's a couple on his knees down here, his shoulder. Oh, I didn't paint his neck. Look at that. How did I miss that? Uh, anyways, those highlights won't be strictly white at this point. They're going to be slightly blue. And we're going to paint everything else around uh, that a, bit, a little bit darker to, to kind of highlight those. And if we need to fortify uh, that highlight in any way, shape, or form, I've got my handy gel pens here and my white scribe all pencil. So we'll do it that way. But I don't, I, sometimes I don't like having that, that stark white as a, as a, as a such a light highlight. Uh oh, lab accident got worse before it got better. Okay, good, but it got better. Uh, now it feels more like swimmer's ear, mild ear infection. Ooh. 
Can you? That's the one where you gotta like pop it or something. Swimmer's ear makes it feel. Or is that the one that makes you feel like you're a little dizzy? Got a got a hair in there. I don't want that. Okay, I'm gonna use. He's got. Uh, if you look at that reference photo, got some nice, really a bright red. Uh, shoes down here, feet, may I don't know, feet, shoes, do robots, robots don't necessarily have feet, right? <laughs> Something like that, I don't know. Uh, anyways, I'm going to throw some of this, this is my red red, this is the reddest red I have, it is pyrol red, I'm going to drop some of that on here. And I'm going to kind of do the same thing. I'm not worried about painting one shoe and then the other shoe I'm going to paint. Or foot. <laughs> one foot or the other foot. Am I even on screen? Yes, I'm on screen. One foot or the other foot. I'm going to paint them all at once. Maybe I'll try to be a little careful around the, the corners here. That would kind of be a first for me to try to be a little bit careful. I don't think I've said it yet. I hope everybody, Shannon says, says, hope you're feeling better. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's like, yeah, in, in that ear. Yeah, hope you're feeling better. Yes, lab accident. I hope you're feeling much better. I don't like when anybody feels sick. It's just not, no, it's not a good feeling for anybody. I want everybody to feel better. Uh, and on that vein, I hope everybody has is having a wonderful week this week. Mine is good-ish. <laughs> good. I'm not going to complain about my week. I, I could, but I won't. Actually, I probably couldn't. Well, I could, but I'm not going to. I've been super busy, but that's... I'll take it. <laughs> I'll take it. Uh, I'll take super busy over anything else. Look, I forgot to paint his shoulder up here, too. Somebody's letting me forget a little bit of the, what I'm doing here. Let's get, let's get that shoulder in there. There we go. Now he looks a little bit more put together. We fine. Later, I looked up, and it looked, I looked like somebody did cut his arm part of his arm off there all right what else do we have we've got a couple of little things up here whatever i'm going to call this an ear cone what would you call this ear, ear cone ear something i don't know let's get uh, let's get it on here and it's pretty silver, that, but this ball at the top is red. There we go. This one over here is red also, and I'm going to kind of save his eyes. He's got this red on his eyes. I'm not going to, to paint that. I'm going to let that be, and I don't like... I don't like that this is red. I want to paint this like an orangey red. So I'm going to cheat with my colors a little bit here. I need to get a little bit more water off of there. I'm going to put some of my azo orange on up here. And then I'm going to put some of this Fire all red down below and let that mix and become happy on its own. And then hopefully that'll be a fun, interesting uh, color at the top. Whoop, let me slide him up just a little bit. Uh, this looks like a good subject for practicing straight lines. I can totally see that. You know what, though? I looked at it and I went, and I, I think you're right. I don't want to say that you're not. But I looked at it and I went, holy cow, look at all of the blue on that. This is going to be a great practice for shadowing. Because you do have these straight lines, but a lot of the lines that I have drawn 
right? These lines on his legs and these ones on his legs where the, the metal is bent uh, on, the, on the forward side of his leg towards us. Hang on just a second. I need to flatten this out. There's no real hard line there. So the only way you're going to get that line is by uh, dropping in a shadow color. And then his knees here, if you can just see in that reference photo, they bulge out. Right? So the only way we can make that look like it bulges is to have a, a lighter area up above it. And then right on the bottom of that, it gets darker. So it gives the depth and illusion. And anywhere this metal, here in kind of his armpit or his rib cage, I'm going to call it this, you know, to call it what we have, it's really quite dark in here. But his arm over here is quite light, and we've got to figure that out. So we've got a lot of, there are some, uh, some straight lines in here. You're exactly right, but it's got some weird shadowing on there, and I think that shadowing could be really fun. So, uh, having said that, <laughs> having said that, uh, I'm going to mix up um, a little bit more of our cobalt blue here, right? That's going to be the main color. And then right next to it, I don't want my shadow to be significantly different. I don't want it to be such a crazy uh, bright color like uh, my phthalo blue. So, I'm going to mix up a puddle of ultramarine blue, and I'm going to kind of hope that that does a little bit of the shadowing. I can see the draw for practicing shadows very true. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I don't work on subjects like this very often, so I'm not noticing the same things. Well, i I, I got to be honest with you. I don't work on subjects like this very often either, and um, that's kind of what makes it, uh, that's kind of what makes it fun and interesting. <laughs> so I don't do it very often either, so... Uh, maybe it's going to be a learning experience for all of us. Um, so, oh, I know what I was saying. I do think it's funny that when we paint shadows, at least I, I'm going to do this from my own experience, and I know that there are a lot of videos and even TV shows out there that you watch for people painting watercolors. The first thing they tell you is, if you're starting to put shadows on, use ultramarine blue. For whatever reason, we all seem, or a great number of us, seem to think that's a good shadow color. And to me, that's always been really funny because, well, one, when I look at a shadow of anything, right, a shadow on the, the table here, right, that's not, that's not blue. But if we paint that as a blue-tinted shadow in a watercolor painting, it looks fine. But what's even funnier about that is that ultramarine is kind of a warm blue, right? It's not the coldest color blue that we can get. So it's, I don't know, it's, it's even funnier to me. Um, but I'm going to, I'm just going to get a nice mix of these. Actually, I'm going to make this a stronger mix. I'm going to put on this side. It looks like my, my table is just ever so slightly slanted and all my colors want to run one way. And I'm going to grab some more of my ultramarine blue and throw it all the way on the side. And then hopefully somewhere in the middle I get kind of a mix. And as I said uh, about this shadowing, I'm just going to... I've got way too much color on there, I can tell you. I'm just going to kind of dive right in and try to put some shadow on here. And I think it's going to take a little finessing for me as I do this, and I can just tell you right off the top, it's way too much and it's way too dark for me. <laughs> I use blue grays or blue gray mixed with a base color, depending on what I'm doing. Okay. Uh, that's wonderful. <laughs> it's wonderful to me that you've gotten away from just painting with uh, ultramarine as a shadow, but you do know, people do say that. See, Shannon, ultramarine makes nice shadows on snow. Okay, on snow. I can see that. I'm just thinking about it. I can totally see that. Um, but you, you, you've, you've heard people say that. You've seen people do it. They just throw in some ultramarine, and it, it does. 
it makes a decent shadow. I think if I were just going to use a color for some shadow, uh, I would pull out my neutral tint. I think the neutral tint uh, adds a wonderful purplish hue uh, for any shadowing um, that it would do. That it does, and the granulation makes for a nice uh, powder snow effect. Oh, interesting. Yeah, I can totally see that. I can totally see that. I'm going to do a little shameless promotion here <laughs> because, again, when I painted uh, what probably is my most famous painting, and I, I say that by the means of it has gotten the most views on YouTube. That's how I'm judging that as most famous. Uh, I painted some snowmen or a snowman on a Christmas card. And I used, oh man, two types of cerulean. And I used a little bit of, um, what's this, uh, turquoise. And I used some, I don't think I used any phthalo. But I used a whole host of different colors on that thing to get... Uh, the shadow's exactly the way I want it to. I just, you saw me turn this and just run run my brush up and down. I just didn't want a super hard line right there. Right, this is bent metal. It's not necessarily squared off metal. So I didn't want that hard, hard line that we were getting uh, by just running my brush down there with paint. Uh, Shannon says, that's the video uh, you found uh, me on. It was that one. I'd say it's a great video. Uh, or I don't know how the video is, the video quality. But it turned out to be a great little card. I really enjoyed it. Uh, people, people seem to like that one quite a bit. I'm just looking here to see what I can do on this, this guy's neck back here. Uh, that was a fun. That was a fun uh, um, painting to do, and boy, that year those were my Christmas cards uh, uh, that year, and I think I painted about three dozen of those. Oh, I used to come out in the studio, and I would literally. When I would paint those, I would literally make an assembly line and just start painting them. Oh, phew. Man, talk about a lot of work. So what I've discovered is uh, not everybody needs a Christmas card. <laughs> after, after all of that, uh, it's so nice to be able to give away a, a homemade Christmas card, though. Um, people, people love it. They, 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 they treat it better. I should say they treat it better. I don't know that they treat it better, but they seem more appreciative of getting a homemade Christmas card. It feels nicer to give a homemade Christmas card and whatnot, but man, sometimes it's a lot of work. Okay, this guy, I'm imagining this guy's head is turned a little bit, and so I'm going to paint. Let's see, I'm looking at that reference photo. I can probably pull this over a little bit more. I'm just going to paint some of his head, maybe like half of his head, and then I'll just do a nice blend out of some color. Now what I'm waiting for really, I should say, right, is uh, Thirsty for a Brew is going to come out with some kind of a robot joke here soon. Thirsty, if you're still there, <laughs> waiting for the uh, waiting for the robot joke. Gotta be coming out. He's furiously looking one up right now. Um, let's see. Uh, lab accident. I like using multiple colors for shadows on white things for white haired characters. It has a nice fantasy effect. You know what's nice about that is that, um, 
white things reflect so many different colors that you can really do that. Uh, I don't, I don't, I will admit, I don't often paint a lot of hair, but I can make the analogy to clouds. Um, I do often paint clouds, and if you just paint a cloud, um, if you paint a cloud and it's uh, white, right? You paint the blue blue sky and you paint a cloud white, and then maybe you put a little bit of gray on the bottom of it or something, a paint's gray or something on the bottom of it. You have a, a cloud and it looks whatever. But boy, if you mix your own gray from a little green and a little red or a little, a little red and gray, throw a little tiny bit of ochre in there. Oh my Lord, your, your clouds just jump off the page. Oh, here we go. What do you call a... Um, what do you call a robotic horse? Okay, uh, I'm going to think about that. Shannon, Shannon can't stay. Um, yeah, I, I only have five hours to sleep before I need to be away. Ooh, go, <laughs> go to sleep. Holy cow. If you only have five hours to sleep before your next shift, whew, please go, go and get some sleep. I don't want you being, I don't want you sleeping on the job or getting in trouble or doing something wrong because you're uh, a, uh, a, a not awake enough to do it. Holy cow. So what do you call a robotic horse? A whoa bot. Oh. Okay. All right. All right. Accepted. A whoa bot. I'll accept it. I'll say, I'm not thinking that's your best, but noted and accepted. I like it. I do like it. All right, we're getting some color on this guy now. It always, uh, to me, I look at a lot of paintings that I do, you know, as I'm doing them, and I look at them, and I go, oh my lord, it's just, it's taken so long to develop this color, it's not, it's not coming together, it's not coming together, and then, you know, happens a lot in watercolor paintings, it's not coming together, it's not coming together, and then, in the matter of five minutes, it all comes together, and you go, wow, that actually looks pretty good, I like that. Oh, I suspect that's we're going to see some of that from this guy. Uh, I don't know for certain, but I suspect we're going to see some of that. Uh, let's see. Come on. I need to get a line. I need to get a line down here, but I want it to be a really soft line right on the corner of where his head is. Right on the corner of where his head is. That doesn't make any sense. Right where his head would bend. How's that? <laughs> that's... that's Oh, Lisa's here. Hello. You're not late. You're just in time. All right. Uh, Lisa, I started playing with pastels this week, which I have done intermittently. Have you ever tried any other mediums? Um, I did some oil pastels. Uh, this was, God, why did I do this? My daughter, at one point in time, when she was small... Uh, no. Well, yes, she was small. Well, when she was younger, let's, let's, let's say it that way. When she was younger, ask me to paint her a flower mural. And I said, okay, I will take up the challenge. I'll paint that flower mural for you. And so I got about a you know, I have, I have rolls of paper, that, you know, kind of like um, butcher paper. They're just long rolls of paper, white paper. And I, uh, I drew out, well, I don't know how many I drew out. I drew out a lot of flowers on it and uh, started to draw them with oil pastels. And it took me the better part of, 
I'm going to say a week and a half to draw this thing. So it's, well, I don't know, two feet, two feet tall by, I don't know. I don't know how long it was. It was long. <laughs> it was a lot longer than it needed to be. Um, and so I, I drew all of those out with oil pastel. And that really is the only other medium uh, I've used in a long time. Other than... The local library here had a a painting topic. Uh, you know, you go down to the to the library, and somebody leads you in a, in a painting uh, topic of God. What I don't know. What we painted something for Halloween, a scarecrow or a ghost or something like that. I don't remember what it was even for Halloween. Um, and we got this little tiny. You know, you know the little tiny plastic cups that you flip the top up. Uh, they were acrylic paints. I did do that. I wouldn't say I did it well, but I had fun with it, and I didn't. I don't think I learned anything. It wasn't really that kind of a course where you're going to learn uh, too much about it. But it was kind of a fun course. But I wouldn't really call that uh, painting in another medium by any stretch. So no, I have not done much with any other medium other than watercolors. Watercolors are kind of my sweet spot. I've gotten to know for the most part watercolors and you can talk about whether, you know, my paintings are, you know, super good or super bad or whatever they are. It won't, won't bother me what you talk about them for me they're enjoyable to do and i think i do a, fa a fair job with them and uh, to me having the fun painting them is is more of the battle than anything so um so i leave it at that uh i think that answers your question have i ever tried any of the meetings no, no, not really nope watercolors are it for me they're quick to set up they're quick to clean up you can you can paint watercolors in oh my god any style you want if you want ultra realistic you can do that if you want wet if you want super loose if you want super tight uh, if you want kind of what I do which is something in between uh, if you just want them to use them to get a feeling across, there's all these different ways that you can use and paint with watercolors. And to me, that's quite exciting. Uh, so I, I've i stuck with them, and, and I'm just trying to uh, enjoy my watercolors as much as possible. And, and you all know, I try to bring some of that enjoyment to everybody else. And I think that's good enough. Oh, so here, speaking of bringing some enjoyment to everybody else. Oh, that kind of looks like a cool arm. I don't know if you guys can see. There you go. Look, we got some dark here right by that line. The seam of his arm there. Maybe this seam kind of comes up that way a little bit more. Maybe I didn't draw that quite as well. There we go. I think that looks nice. Um... Oh, I see. You do like the no smell fast cleanups. Yep, that's nice. Most frustrating for me is that I can fix mistakes easier with other mediums. Um, really? <laughs> can you? Yeah. Okay. Maybe. I can see that. I I I do um, I do try to defend watercolors quite a bit because I don't. I don't buy into the notion that you can't fix all the mistakes that you make with watercolors, but I will readily admit that sometimes if you're using a staining color or something like that and you you go over the wrong area, yeah, you're, you, you might be stuck. The answer is <laughs> use a different color. Um, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I, I'm, I, won't, I won't argue the point too much. I think you're 
you're mostly right. But but the other side of that is um, if when you're painting, your paints maintain their wetness, man, you can move that color around and do almost anything with it that you want. It's and and you've got almost unlimited power uh, to do a lot of stuff with your paints now. Now, to me, right here, this blue back here is a little too bright. And we just talked about shadows. And this is, it's not a cast shadow. But it's a, it's a shadow area nonetheless. So I'm going to put a little bit of Payne's Gray in there. And I'm going to really just pull this out. Now, the cool thing about Payne's Gray, ha, especially with blues, is that it blends super well it doesn't change the value all that much because Payne's Gray already has quite a bit of blue in it. And you can kind of make it, you can kind of change the whole feel of it. We just went from a shadow area right there that was pretty bright back there to one that now looks like it's darker and pushed way back. I mean, that's one cool thing. I'll tell you when I when I discovered that two years ago. What year is it now? What year is it now? So right after we all um, went into lockdown for uh, COVID across the nation, one of the first things I painted was one of those blue masks, and I, I don't know where the I don't know where the painting is, but. Um, no, I don't know where the painting is, but the video is here on YouTube, and you can see it. And uh, I paint with either cerulean or cobalt, probably cerulean blue, and it and it looks one layer, it looks really kind of you know flat in the painting until I mixed in just a little bit of um, Payne's gray, and then the whole thing looks all of a sudden like it's got a, a ton of depth to it. All right, and maybe not a ton of depth, but enough depth, <laughs> right? It's got much more depth to it than it did before. Uh, so for me, that was a big lesson learned um, on one way to use Payne's Gray. Kind of an interesting, an interesting side thing about Payne's Gray that I had never known before. But with blues, it really... Um, really can help you add some depth to your blues. All right. Uh, what was I talking about before? Was I talking about anything important? I'm just going to keep rambling on. Somebody stop me when you need me to say talk about something else. Um, oh, I was going to say, that's what I was going to say. Uh, talking about making people happy. One of my coworkers, uh, one of my coworkers daughters is an aspiring graphic artist and uh, he's done a, a bit of artwork himself and uh, I took into uh, work today a picture of one of the paintings I'm working on which in this case happens to be um, Bigfoot riding on a unicorn, <laughs> which I think is turning out hysterically. Uh, I think it's I think it's really funny. I'm I'm tickled at the way it looks. I can't tell you. It makes me laugh every time I look at it. Uh, so I showed it to him, and he looked at it, and he you know picked. I had it on my phone. And he picked it up and he looked at it, and he goes. What he looks at it again. He goes, "What am I looking at here?" <laughs> he goes, "Is this, is this Bigfoot? Is this a unicorn?" Because I have no idea what I'm looking at. Uh, I just, I was, uh, I was cracking up. But it's a fun painting to do. It's, it's hysterical. I was thinking of. Oh, that brings me. I'll talk about this. That'll bring me to another topic. Doing well tonight. I was thinking of doing, for the month of August, 
I was thinking about changing subjects a little bit. Instead of doing something um, from nature or something that you see around the house or that you see wherever, uh, I was thinking I would do mashups. And I've always thought mashups were kind of fun, but I haven't really done many mashups. Um, and I guess I should explain what my idea. Oh, that's nice. I just put a finger right in there. Of a mashup would be. But, you know, you take one object, whatever it is. I don't know. Uh, let's take, what do I have? What do I have here? Uh, Dory, right? If I took Dory and I put uh, a crazy funny pair of glasses on Dory, right? I've mixed up Matt. Uh, two different uh, subjects, um, or I'm trying to think what. Anyways, just taking two dissimilar items and putting them together to make one funny or fun kind of a, a kind of an item. I thought that'd be kind of fun to paint. What do you all think about that? Is that something you would <laughs> be interested in seeing anything of? For August, I don't even know what, um, what, what subjects actually fit exactly in autumn. Or can you do a, like a fish? Uh, if you go fishing, lots of people go fishing in late summer, right? You can do a fish with a pipe in its mouth or something like that. You know, just two completely random things that you wouldn't think wouldn't ever go together. And you put them together and you have some fun with it. I thought it would kind of be a hoot. I don't know if anybody else thinks that. Uh, Lisa, it would be good. I, <laughs> I really do. I, it potentially could be super funny. Could be super funny. Could turn out to be horrible. <laughs> it would be. All right, I got one. Uh, yeah, I got one. It could be funny. I'll take that as a yes. You should definitely get it. Go and run with it. <laughs> because why would you? Why would I not? All right, Mr. Robot Leg here. I feel like uh, who said who said it before? Shannon, who said that, that this was going to turn out to be a lot of straight lines? I think you're kind of right. Let's see, I want to do watch this. I'm going to do this. Here's that straight line coming down there. But you can see now, um, you know, at the beginning I talked about not, not necessarily wanting to, a white highlight on some of these areas. And you can see on his arm or, or around here, down his leg here, where I've left uh, that white from that initial layer, all of a sudden it, it does really look like... Uh, it's it's a white highlight, but it's not a white highlight. It's a some other color highlight. In, in this case, it's a blue highlight. Right? It's it's funny um, how our eyes think of things, or why we think of things the way we do. And I'm just kind of continuing to put a little bit of color on here. I don't want to paint uh, these two legs together. And I have to be careful here because one of the things I talk about is a lot is putting lights next to darks. Right? You want, you want a dark value next to a light value. You don't want two dark values together. Come on out of there. 
you don't want two dark values together. So as I'm doing this, and I know that the leg in front here is gonna have a slightly darker value than this leg behind, I need to then have a slightly lighter value on the back of whatever leg is over here, his right leg. <laughs> He's looking at me, his right leg. So it, with this paper, it's a little tough because, and we talked about this before too, this, um, this paper, by virtue of it being wood pulp paper, it runs, the color continues to run and run and run. So oftentimes you end up just trying to get color off of a place uh, and then where it's at a stronger concentration, it'll just continue to flow back in there. Uh, Liza, I don't know who is as old as me in this chat, but my brothers had Rock'em Sock'em Robots. I, rem I, <laughs> I will admit to having Rock'em Sock'em Robots. I thought they were a hoot. My brother and I destroyed them in, <laughs> in not very long. You learned you only took the red ones. The blue one was had been hit so many times, it was a little broken, and its head didn't stay on quite as long as the other one. <laughs> but rock, but you're right, Rock'em Sock'em for Robots was a lot of fun, and I considered painting a Rock'em Sock'em robot. I was going to grab one of those uh, as I was looking for images. Uh, and I would love to tell you a good reason why I didn't get one, but <laughs> I didn't. I'm too young. Uh, believe me, I am not too young. I may act too young because I have a mental age of nine, uh, but I'm not too young, believe me. I feel it all the time as, as the arthritis in my hands kicks in and I try to get up out of a chair and I can't because my back is fused into place. Uh, it, <laughs> I have... I have had a tough, uh, tough life. Let's see. We had some random soccer rock and robots. Yes. Uh, a gag gift for Christmas one year. Oh, man. What a fantastic gag gift. Rock and sock and robots. I was going to do, I did some, uh, I did some yard work, some housework this weekend. And I was going to do more painting than I, than I did. I didn't get to do all that much, but I was going to do some more than I did. But um, as I'm standing on the top of a ladder to, <laughs> to do some painting, uh, I started to uh, drop the, the paintbrush. I couldn't, I couldn't grab it because uh, I've, I've, Quite a bit of arthritis in in the wrist oops in my wrist in my thumb and in my fingers and i couldn't i made me so mad i couldn't literally grab the paintbrush now it wasn't uh, it wasn't a paintbrush like this not that this would have been any better uh it was one of those big painters uh, brushes but still it was oh it was so hard but we managed to get through it i managed to get through it it was fine 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 Let's see. Uh, that's what you call it, a gag gift. <laughs> I, I, I love Rock'em Sock'em Robots. Okay, I'm going to kind of jump ship here a little bit. And uh, I'm going to mix up. I'll do it over here. I'm going to mix up a gray, my own gray. I'm going to take some of my phthalo green. And I'm going to mix it with just a little bit of a lizard crimson. And let's see if I can get a decent gray out of that. It might be a little dark there. Let's see. We get these just right. And then maybe a touch of yellow. 
<laughs> Let's uh, hope our eyes stay good. Um, well, you haven't seen how I painted the house yet. <laughs> you might not want to keep your eyes good to see how I've painted. <laughs> there we go. That's a... Yeah, come on. I'm, now I'm just making a brown. And I thought it was that. I thought it was... I know it's this. Let's see what we get with... Um, Oh, that's a better gray. Okay, let's do this. Let's get that out of here. And let's get a new paper towel. All right, so I'm gonna use some quinacridone rose. I'm gonna start, just back the stream up three minutes here. And I'm gonna use a little bit of this phthalo green, and we're gonna make our own gray. <laughs> I knew that one of these reds would make a nice gray for me. There we go. Look, that's a nice gray, nice warm gray right there. And this gray will have a lot more character with it than just using the um, Payne's gray or something like that. It'll have a ton more character. There we go. And I'm going to paint whatever this thing is. I don't know what he's got on his chest here. Some kind of a slot machine or something like that. I, all these old robots have all those dials and gauges and they're all sticking out on their chest and whatnot. And I always look at him and I go, what, what, what is that for? Why do you need to have this crazy access panel right on your chest? Why couldn't you just <laughs> put one dial there? Even as a kid, I was like, really? That just seems unnecessary to do that. But it does make them look nice, I suppose. All right, all right. Let's get this painted nice and gray in here. Lots of times when I do this, um, I like to use... A turquoise, I think turquoise, a little bit of turquoise in this gray gives it really a nice, um, a nice color. But I think for this one, I want more of an old timey look. And so I'm going to leave the turquoise out of it. But I want to look like this has been around, it's been aged a little bit, right? Where we are talking about a an old vintage toy here or something that's supposed to look like a vintage toy maybe uh, maybe it doesn't look exactly like a vintage toys let's see um, live action I'm not even 30 but most of my friends have no idea what I'm explaining when I say I've played with them <laughs> that rock'em sock'em robots is one of the best toys ever Well, I don't know. It kept us. It kept my brother and I uh, busy for quite a while. I'll just say that. I mean, that's really the um, the reason you have toys, right? Is so that you're kept busy and out of your parents' hair <laughs> for for as long as possible. Maybe I should ask my mother if it was a successful toy or not. If she says it kept my brother and I busy, then uh, then maybe it was a successful toy. But in my mind, it was a success. I don't know. I don't know if in hers it was. All right, all right, all right. So we're getting some more painted on here. I don't think we have too much more to go on this. This guy, I, I do, I'm kind of, yes, I'm kind of biding my time, 
kind of waiting. I want to make sure the body of this robot is nice and dry before we go back and do anything else. Ooh, and if you look at this now, look, we've got, uh, we've got some red tint up here. Obviously some reddish tint down here. It's a little bit more green in there. Oh, that gray is so much better than, um, than a, a Payne's gray. Play-Doh. Ah, see, uh, we were never, never allowed to play with Play-Doh. Uh, let's see. Another favorite robot was the Lost in Space one. I never, never really, I don't think I even knew what Lost in Space was until I was an adult. I do, I do know what it is now. That's Robbie the robot, right? And he's got the, the big things coming out of his head that go in circles. And he vaguely, vaguely looks like a, um, a black colored Michelin man, <laughs> right? Is that, am I thinking of the right one? He's got these round made in kind of like round segments or am I not thinking of the right right robot maybe I'm not even thinking of the right robot wouldn't be the first time I had it wrong but I think that's right I know it was the uh no, I was thinking Swiss Family Robinson, but that was, those guys were stuck in a tree somewhere or something. That wasn't Swiss Family Robinson. Ah, oh, let's see. How do I want to do this back leg back here? Let's do this. Let's get some good color in here. I had... Well, I'm trying to think what toys I had as a small child. I had a slot car set. Oh, that is the one. Okay, I did. I get that one right. Okay. I had a slot car set that kept me busy for a long time. I would go down in the basement and play with the slot cars for hours on end. And now in my life, I look at that and I go, why would I ever have done that? All they did was go around in a circle. <laughs> That's all they did. They went around in a circle and I watched for hours and hours and hours. <laughs> That's so silly. Um, but I don't, I don't remember having too, too many indoor toys. Right? I, lived, I lived mostly outdoors growing up. I was lucky enough that I could spend a lot of my time outdoors. And uh, so um, I would, I remember I got a number of different rubber baseballs. And I wanted to be a pitcher, right? I wanted to be a pitcher on the baseball team. And so... My dad built me a mound and, uh, in the yard, and I would throw those baseballs against our barn, and they would bounce back to me. And that way I could get both uh, pitching and a little defensive practice in at the same time. I remember throwing balls against there for hours and hours and hours. Uh, my brother's for a racing track and cars one year. I got set up on the, uh, it got set up on the pool table and enjoyed crashing cars at top speed. <laughs> uh, yeah, they left you easy bike over. Uh, let's see. I don't know what other toys I had growing up. I'm trying to, I'm not, I'm not saying I didn't have a lot of toys. Well, I know I didn't have a lot of toys. I'm not saying I didn't have toys. I'm just trying to remember what some of my favorites were. I think I was pretty easy. I think if you ask my parents, they would say it was pretty easy when it came to toys. I remember, um, I remember 
wanting the Atari 2600, but that's hardly this kind of a toy. And I remember getting a couple of handheld video games. I have one of them over here, a little, a little football game that you push the buttons on and whatnot. That sort of thing. All right, so I guess if I'm looking at this, we can say that I've kind of gone away a bit from trying to make sure that I have all of the that I have all of the shadows exactly right on here. And I've gone into making it kind of what I would think is more of look uh, interesting to me, right? I think his legs down here, well, I got to get this out of here because that'll be a back run. His legs down here look a little bit more interesting. The shadows aren't anywhere close to being right. Uh, but I think it looks more interesting than not uh, because of the way the colors are in here. And, and sometimes that's enough. Right, sometimes it, it, it is. And I'm going to go back and darken some more of these. I never got the lab set I want. Oh, I did. I did have a, a science kit of some sort. Yes, and I had something from Radio Shack. Like a... 50 in one science kit, something like that. That was extremely cool. I do remember that. I, I don't, he's coming alive. He's getting there. He's getting there. I think, had I not at the beginning been quite so obsessed with blues and thought more about values that uh, I might have done a little better earlier on. Oh, look at that. Look at that neck now. All right. Uh, but even with that, I think he's getting better as we're doing a little bit more here and there. And I'm happy with the way he's coming along, actually. Let's get some more uh, right over here and let that come down a little bit. And like I said, these uh, this is, I've kind of gone away <laughs> from uh, from not copying, but you know, reinterpreting the way that he looks on uh, that image, that image, whatever that image, uh, to just kind of doing something I think is going to make him look uh, interesting. Let me do this. Come on. And I'm trying, I'm trying to push a couple of these values a little bit. To hopefully bring a little extra interest here. Get a little bit of this cobalt. Bring that down. I think that's a little too much on the ultramarine. I think it's going to work. I can hear somebody. Can you guys hear somebody outside? Somebody's out there doing something. I don't have any idea what they're doing, but they're doing something. I don't even know who's home right now. I thought I thought my kids were at the fair. It's okay. I'm probably just being burgled. <laughs> no, I'm not. I'm, I'm sure I'm not being burgled. Uh, I am kind of curious what the noise is, though. It's all right. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, yeah. Look at his legs. Now, his legs... Okay, so his legs don't look anything like maybe what they were supposed to look like. Supposed to. I'm going to put that in quotes, right? Like our reference... I guess the better way to say this is they don't look exactly like what our reference photo looks like, but I think they look cool. And I need to, I need to get a little bit of gray in here. This is too bright now. With that little bit of gray to dull this other stuff down, that's a little too bright over here. So let's 
let's add a little bit of gray. But I'm okay with I'm okay with some of these colors being um, a bit brighter. I really am. I, it doesn't bother me at all. I, I want it to look like uh, if if there's a little different thing here that you know if there's a little different angle here that you're seeing that the light is coming off of it just a little bit here and there and it's giving it just a little different perspective so um, I'm okay with it I'm okay with a, a number of these different colors on there but oh look at oh yes his arm is looking but look at his arm back there now okay good see this is where it's really starting to happen the whole thing is starting to come to life a little bit. Ooh, so when it starts to get exciting. Oh, but wait a minute. I got to do his feet, his shoes. Are, did we decide are these feet or his shoes? I don't remember. Go check it out. <laughs> we can, we can, no, I'm not going to check it. I've done that before. I, I always feel bad that uh, I, I'm leaving my stream to go check something out. If it's an axe murder or something, I, I want to be here and you all can view it and then they'll have footage or something. No, no, no it's just, uh, it's not, a, I'm sure, I shouldn't have said that. I'd be, I just said it to be funny. Uh, no, I'm sure it's, I'm sure it's nothing. Uh, from time to time, there are animals that walk past out there and I hear them sometimes. Uh, the kids may have come home and they're taking out the garbage. It could, it's, it's not far from here. So it could be that it's all, it could be all kinds of stuff. <clears throat> all right. All right. Let's see what we got for some shoes here. Shoes, feet, shoes, feet, shoes, feet, shoes. I'm not sure. Shoes or feet. One of the two. Are you guys enjoying this one? Doesn't seem to be quite as colorful. Maybe it's the blue. My wife's theory is that blue is not the best color to, to use for a lot of things because it makes you feel blue. And I've always been like, oh, that got dark. <laughs> I listen to too many murder podcasts. I'm sorry, it got a little dark. I didn't mean to go there. That's... <laughs> Just want me to get murdered. <laughs> uh, what could go wrong? Just watch. I, <laughs> well, the, the real question is, would my viewership go up or go down? <laughs> and, I, and I don't know which I would hope for. <laughs> One way it would mean that the, the that would... That, is, that that's more fun than my painting and the other way would mean um, I don't know anyway oh look at shoe hey look at shoe that's that's okay look at that that looks good I like that let's see if we can do that on the other one uh, I think so I was doing a Twitch stream and Mr. Thirsty for a Brew was, I have to think you were there. Along with Minty, if she, Minty Mintington, if she's here tonight. And another friend of mine, and I really did hear something over here. And I actually did go out and look for it to see what it was. And I never found out what it was, which leads me to believe it was some kind of animal that was out there. And as soon as he heard me or she heard me open the door, pshoom, off it went. So that's, I'm sure that's what it is this time. The color red, are you, uh, what color red are you using for the shoes? Um, you can't tell if it's pyro red or cadmium red. Well... I'll tell you, and I should have been saying this all along, so I'll just kind of apologize for that. Um, I do, I, I try to keep everybody informed as I go. Sometimes I get too involved with my stories and just blathering on about whatever. But this is Pyrol Red, and uh, for the most part, 
right? So this big puddle that I have here is pyrol red. And then I put just a little bit of, Alizarin Crimson in it. Um, yes, Alizarin Crimson. Sometimes, well, no, that may not be true. I may have dipped into, for this part of the shoe up here, I may have dipped into this um, Maroon Paraline, which I really love as a color. I'll take a moment to talk about Maroon Paraline. I love it as a color. I hate it as a paint. <laughs> it's a wonderful color. It mixes really nicely with a lot of other colors. It blends nicely. Um, right? So you so at this point you're saying, well, it sounds horrible. It's a beautiful color and it blends nicely. Why do you hate it so much? Well, it is it's a it's a non-staining color, and it sits on the top of everything you do, and it sits there very lightly, and it does not soak in at all, so that if you ever need to put a layer of paint on top of it, right, if you're going um, to do a wash over top, Forget about it. It just comes right off. I mean, right off. There's no, there's no wash over top of it. It's, it just lays on the top. And ah, I look at it and I'm like, oh, please, can I just put a wash over top of it? Why can I not? But I leave it on my palette because I really do... I like the color. The color's, I think, quite lovely. For some autumn colors, or you're going to use it for um, a little bit of rust, or something like that, it's wonderful, but it's got to be kind of the last thing you do. And if it's not the last thing you do, you're in trouble. You really are in trouble. Okay, here's an arm. Where's an arm? Look at that. Quick as a lick. There's that arm. I want to paint right around that seam on the other side too. Uh, and now that now that all of the blue in the body is dried, we can really go in and touch up however we we see all of this needing to be touched up. And I, I guess I should say the other thing is that I drew these seams pretty well, I think, pretty well. Not super, super great because I'm not the best drawerist in the world. All right? I can draw, but... It's not the best. I don't always have the straightest lines, kind of like my painting. <laughs> um, but in this instance, it's I, I, I want to have a fun, kind of whimsical kind of a painting. I don't want, I mean, I like if it was, you know, just like uh, the reference photo, but I don't, it's not really my thing. So... Uh, the fact that it isn't straight, it's got a little wider in some spots and a little narrower in sp some spots isn't really going to bother me a whole lot. And if you do this or something like this, um, you'll get to decide that. But I hope that you allow that paint to, to do some of its own thing if it wants to and not necessarily be straight. And um, the other thing is that and it's not straight, you know what's going to happen when you step three feet away? You're never going to notice. No one's ever going to notice that it's not perfectly straight. 
<clears throat> what else can we talk about tonight? Does anybody else have any other questions? I feel like I've been doing most of the talking and <laughs> not, <laughs> not a lot of answering of questions for you guys. Um, and that, that's fine. That's fine. Maybe that's the way tonight is going to be. It's going to be yam me yammering about childhood memories. <laughs> that's uh, kind of the way it's been for a month, I think. You guys have all been nice enough to join me in that in my journey of remembrance for the past month. I truly hope that you all have enjoyed it. I have thoroughly enjoyed having all of you guys with me as I've gone through my summer of remembrance. <laughs> That's a good way to say it. Uh, what can I do here? I get a little bit more color. More blue, less gray. As I come under his chin here. There we go. I'm going to blend this back. Know what to do with these eyes up here because they're not drawn super well because... See my previous comments? Sometimes I don't draw things super well. Now, he needs more blue. More blue, less gray. There we go. And I promise I'll hurry up with this. I'm not slow painting by any stretch, but... It's funny, I always, I, I look at an image and I go, oh, I can, I can paint this in, I try to do it in about 50 minutes. I could paint this in 50 minutes. If I say I can paint it in 50 minutes, that means it's going to take me um, an hour to an hour and 10 minutes to do. I could paint this in 50 minutes and I don't know where we're at now, an hour and 20 minutes already on this thing that I thought I was just going to be able to do in no time. But look at it, it's turning out pretty good. It's turning out good for what it is. I like it. I like it. I'll paint it and give it to my wife. She loves robots. I've painted several for her before. She's got, um, if you guys know the, the book series um, put out by, God, what is it? It's Tashin or something like that. Well, they do one, a book, and it's just a picture book on all these different, to uh, different pictures of one topic. It's basically what it is. Anyway, she's got a robot book, and I, uh, I did, I don't know, I, I did a number of them out of there. Uh, let's enjoy your channel. It's so fun to look at how you make it pop um, and come alive no matter the subject. Well, that's the fun part of it, right? That's, that should be what we all do as, as painters and artists. Um, we all want it to, to pop and to come alive and to look fun and, and I guess, I guess what that really means is we, we want it to evoke some sort of emotion in the viewer. Right? It doesn't have to be... It doesn't have to be... I always say it doesn't have to be perfect. I don't know what perfect is. Perfect is a construct made up by somebody to make other people miserable. Right? So I don't know what perfect is, but it doesn't have to be... What, what you think somebody else is going to think is right... It has to get across a feeling. And if you can get across a feeling in what you paint, oh my God, you are so far uh, ahead of the game. I don't know how these, I don't know how his knees are going to do down here. Let's, I'm just going to kind of paint them on like that. And you can see that they're knees there. I've got a couple of things to do. I need to wait for his head to dry now. Oh, you know what I can do before I do that? I've got this red that we used on his feet shoes down here. 
give a pop of color to this and a little bit on this side. And then I'm going to fill the rest of that in with just, oh no, don't do it. I just touched it. I just, oh, the red just touched the blue and started to run in there. Tragedy, I thought I had it just about right. Uh, and here we go. This is a good example. That was a mistake by me. <laughs> One of many that I made, I admit, and that's fine. I think a lot of watercolors is not being able to prevent making any mistake because we're just gonna, right? I think what the, uh, the, the, the trick is, is to be able to survive those mistakes and, and overcome them and make something that's going to look nice despite the fact that we make mistakes. And then <clears throat> when we do it again the next time, um, it's no longer a mistake. It's just something that happened on the way to getting your painting done. <laughs> mistake? No. No, it's not a mistake. That's just, that just happens. That's water being water. That's what we can tell ourselves. <laughs> That's all it is. Come on over there. I need a, I need a highlight on there. There we go. There we go. Oh, and that, that looks good. Look, let me pick that up so you can see. Whoop. Look at that. looks pretty cool. Uh, let's see. We got his legs down here. I like his legs. I like his feet. I'm going to go into my neutral tint. I'm going to put it in the gray that we had here. <gasps> I didn't finish on my gray over there. Well, I shouldn't have put this in my gray. My neutral tint. But while I'm waiting for a little bit to dry over there, we can put the soles. All the, okay, so these must be shoes. They can't be feet because they have soles on them. I've solved it. There we go. There are those. I want to do a little bit. A bit here, come on. I can even go darker than this. A little bit dark here. Give me a little bit more of this dark. Dark, dark, dark up here. Dark, dark, dark. Dark, 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 dark. Yes, and, and um, you do have to talk to yourself sometimes you can do this. <laughs> that is one thing I love about art. Uh, it helps us handle life better. It does. It does. There's no controlling it sometimes. And then you don't... Water doesn't want to be controlled. Water wants to be water and do water things. We're trying to force water into doing what we want, and sometimes, sometimes water fights back. So the solution is let water do what it wants to. We'll, we'll take care of it on the other side. Oh, well, this got, I don't like this dark line here, but I'll take a line and then. I'm going to put a light wash on the outside of this. Oops, I got to do one thing here. Let's put a little blue on the inside of that one. Inside of that one. All right. Um, and then I want to get a really light blue wash. I'll go around the outside. Wait, you can be a little bit darker than I need. Quite a bit darker than I need. Just to cover up a little bit of this super light area that I left. Pull a little bit of that out. 
There, 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 there. Okay, good, 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 good. I don't want to take away those circles. You can totally still see that they're there. But I don't want, I don't want to have like two circles around each thing there. So I wanted to take one of those away. Ah, and now I've got, see, that's all done. So now if you look at this, this is sitting on a black kind of a frame. Well, I don't like black. Well, I don't like black in this instance. Black is fine for some things, but a lot of times if you paint a, a lot of black, black is very overwhelming. So I think for us, this neutral tint will fit the bill. It's dark, but it's not so dark that it's going to take over the painting. So a little bit of it on there. There we go. I think that's good. And I guess I do need to mix up a little bit more of this green, don't I? Because I've got a low light to paint. There's more to this than I thought there was when I started this. <laughs> There, there's definitely more to this. I'm watching the numbers up here. When I look up, I'm, I'm, I'm gaining and losing people. I, I don't know if people are going, okay, I'm, I'm over it <laughs> and leaving. I don't know. I can't see who's here and who's not here. But, or if people are going, uh, uh, I got to go to bed. It's getting late or what's going on. Uh, but if you've just come in here, I, the numbers have jumped around a little bit. Welcome, welcome, welcome. I hope that you are enjoying this. I'm going to drop down a brush size so I can do some of these little bits and pieces here. I'm going to go back to my red. You know what? I'm not going to use red. We've got a lot of red. Let me go to orange. I'll mix this orange. This is Azo orange. Love Azo orange. I wish it was a little bit more... Um, transparent, but I do love hazel orange. And I don't think, well, let me paint everything that goes up and down here. I don't think we have to be super concerned about getting this exactly right or painting any kind of a shadow on this. We just need, this is the time, we just need to fill in some color. All we're doing is putting in a box and this orange is going to jump against the, the gray. There we go. And um, let's see. I guess I'll do red here. Uh, Live action. I've been listening while munching and taking my match right on schedule. Munching. Lab accent, what are you munching on? Anything good? You want to share with the rest of us? I found, so I don't know how many of you are from the eastern uh, part of the United States. Actually, I, I don't know where they're sold at anyways, but... Um, had to run my daughter and I had to run to the dollar store yesterday and I don't even remember what we went to get but we were all excited because this is sounds so silly uh, we found hers potato chips <laughs> Ooh, apple cinnamon checks that sounds good we found hers potato chips and my daughter is a big fan of the office so as soon as she saw that, she was like, oh, hers, potato chips. This is what they were looking for in uh, wherever. Wherever Jim got transferred to. Um, he rarely says, my breath cereal, but it sounded so good. It does sound good. 
Let's see. Oh, I can paint this stuff yellow up here. This is uh, my yellow that I have here is a nickel. Oh, it's not. I was going to say it's nickel azo yellow, but it's not nickel azo yellow. It's Hansa yellow. Nickel azo yellow and Hansa yellow are very similar colors. They are a cold yellow and uh, if you if you watch a lot of impressionist painters, impressionist painters I think like uh, nickel azo yellow for some reason. Impressionist painters use interesting colors. They use a lot of phthalos and mix it a lot of times, and they use a lot of um, cobalt colors from time to time. Uh, but just to do some interesting things. Uh, Don Wilcox, the Crafty Visage. Hello from Maine, all the way from Maine. Wow. It's a long way away and a late night for you. <laughs> um, but welcome. I'm glad, you, I'm glad you stopped by. If you have any questions about anything, please, please, please throw them out there. If it's a question that's already been asked, well, that's fine. I'll just answer it again. Um, love the robot. Love the popsicles. Oh, the popsicles. Thank you. I did like the popsicles. I hung the popsicles up in my office. And I've got a lot of good comments on them. But thank you for that. I do have a few projects coming up this month in August that I'm hoping to accomplish. And I've put some stuff on my Discord channel trying to trying to use I'm trying <laughs> trying to use the tools that I set apart for myself to use. So I put it out in Discord so uh, maybe it'll keep me a little bit more accountable too and everybody can see and ask questions uh, about how it's coming along and maybe it'll keep me a little bit more on track. I don't, I don't know about that. Haven't found anything yet that keeps me <laughs> completely on track, but uh, we'll see how it goes. Uh, a list of those projects that I have coming up that I'm working on. And for this month, I've got my Bigfoot riding a unicorn. I've got it right over here. I'm, I'm happy to show you guys if you want. Okay, I, I just darkened this up. This had gotten uh, a bit lighter for me, and I wanted to make that darker. I think it looks darker. It looks better darker because it pushes that arm out a little bit. It gives that a little bit more definition. All right, I'm going to let's see if I can what I can do here. Really light. This guy doesn't have white teeth. I hate I hate to say this. Um, he's a coffee drinker, and his teeth have gone slightly yellow. So, yeah, there you go. That's too bad. Not quite white teeth. Ah, gotta feel bad for him. But what are you gonna do? Oh my gosh. It I just got on Discord as well as Twitch. <laughs> tech is crazy. <laughs> tech is crazy. I work in the tech field, and I'll tell you, tech is crazy. Oh, my eyes are starting to go goofy. It's getting late for me. My eyes are starting to, to get tired after being in front of a computer for most of the day today. There we go. We got some eyeballs on him now. As soon as that dries, we'll we'll go around those again. And it looks like he's got some red on the outside of that. So let's go ahead and put some red on. This is where this is where I always get afraid because I don't have good circles drawn, and I don't want to goof it up here. There's only a little bit of fudging you can do. If I could draw better, I always feel that, in this instance anyways, I'd be able to paint a little better. Not that I necessarily think you need to know how to draw to be able to paint. But in this instance, of course it would help if I could stay within the lines too. In this instance, I do think it would help a little bit. Well, he's got a little bit of a big eye over there. His eyes aren't going to be quite exactly right. 
you know what? He came out of a cheap, um, <laughs> a cheap factory, and the guy painting him, the guy painting his eyes, uh, took the day off, and somebody filled in for him. So <laughs> his eyes turned out a little goofy. That's the story on his eyes. Actually, I guess I should have just made them both just completely bonkers, and it would have been a lot better. Look, <laughs> his eyes are one's taller and one's uh, shorter. Uh, sorry about that, buddy. Let's see. We've got... Oh, we're so close at this point. We're so close. I'm going to put a little turquoise down here. I love... Turquoise is one in this M-Gram set. Turquoise is one of my favorite colors. I don't necessarily think it looks like a natural turquoise color. I mean, it's not far off. But, I, but the color just has such vibrance. When you put it on the paper, it's just such an interesting color I can't I can't help but like it does uh, does anybody else use M gram paints or do you have a different turquoise anybody use a different turquoise I, I, I honestly I can't imagine that too many people keep turquoise uh, in their or on their palette Right? I, I really can't believe that too many people would do that. But I do for some reason. <laughs> for whatever reason. I do. Alright, you guys probably thought I forgot all about this up here, but I didn't. Okay, and I'm we're all winding down now. We're getting there. I've got to I got to do a little bit in here. Uh, I'm gonna cheat. Yeah, I'm gonna use a pencil and draw a couple of lines on here. Let's see, is this all dry? Most of this is dry. Uh, actually, hold on one second. I'll do it this way. Instead of a normal pencil, I've got some watercolor pencils here. These are Prismacolor watercolor pencils, and I must have a dark color in here somewhere. Something I could draw a line with. All right, there's a gauge and a gauge. What's it look like here? Let's give us a different color gauge in here. That's all dry. That's all dry. So I, I don't think it matters exactly what's in here as long as there's something on here to make it look right. Draw some stripes on that. I uh, probably can't even see those stripes. Quite honestly, I don't know what's in here. Is that wet? I don't want to touch anything that's wet. There we go. And I'm just going to give a little tiny line. Um, oh, wait. Uh, most turquoise watercolors are so pretty to me. Yeah, I know, right? Right? I struggle with the bright colors. Uh, I get that. I totally get that. There we go. He's got a line there on his mouth. And now I just need this gray again. Um, bright colors can be difficult to handle. The, the way to handle the bright colors is to have the, what is it? This is not the, the opposite color 
or something close to the opposite color in the opposite color family to tone it down a little bit always helps. Uh, it's not easy to do, it's easy to say. Uh, my main ones I've been using are Daniel Smith. I used to mix two things. Uh, this might be Holbein in the palette at the moment. I do like Holbein paints. Uh, most of them. What do I need to paint? Oh, his eyes. My only problem with Holbein paint, and I, I like it. I, have, I bought a whole set of it. Oh, um, but Holbein starts off with such mixes of paints, and it kind of bothers me a little bit. I feel as though with the Holbein paints that you almost um, you almost handicap yourself a little bit as you mix them because your primary your primary mix. Is going to end up being more like a secondary or tertiary mix of colors because each of their colors has like two or three different pigments in it, and so I have them, but it it feels to me as though it's easy to make them um, uh, muddy brown or gray, and. I don't know, it's just, a, it's just a weird kind of a thing. But if you use the colors individually, they're beautiful colors. They are beautiful colors. I still don't like this eye. I'm going to pull that off one more time, and I'm going to let that dry for just a second. And I need to try to match this color of gray that's in here somehow, because somehow I didn't paint a little bit of this. How that happened, I'm not exactly sure. I'm not, I don't know whose job it was to try and keep me on track tonight. Let's see if I can fix this a little bit. Um, I think I got it at a, at a rummage sale. Oh, my favorite way to buy paints. That's the best way to buy paints. Or the other the way the other way that I do it is I go to estate sales, and sometimes at estate sales you get the same thing. You know, they're just run by people who don't, they don't care so much about <laughs> how much they get for any one thing. They, just, they get paid on the whole, and they're just trying to get rid of everything at these estate sales. So I got at one for, I don't know, I'm, I'm trying to remember. It was like 300, for like 300 bucks, I got a huge amount. I would say, God, I, pr I probably got $300 just in paper, and then I, I don't know how many paints I got, a ton of different paints. Oh, look at all these dials down here. Now, see, I forgot all about these dials. Throw a quick bit of color on these. Each time I look at this, I'm like, wow, there's more to this than I remember there being when I drew this. <laughs> Quickly put that on. There's a little guard over top of that. Uh, there's probably, whoops, there's one over the top of that. There's one over the top of that. Let's put one over top of each of these. There we go. Oh, I apologize if I'm keeping anybody up later than normal. It wasn't my intention to uh, have this video run out. Oh my God, we're almost in two hours. Whew. I get up at 5 a.m., so this is really getting late for me. Uh, in theory, I know how to use them with the complementary colors, but I'm much more of an inky, murky color kind of a person. 
Um, if you're an inky, murky color kind of a person, you know what? Embrace the inky, murky colorness. Make that inky, murky colorness yours. Um, there's nothing wrong with that. There's there's a there's a place for that too. And people, there's a whole lot of people that love that inky, murky and not the brightness. Um, occasionally you challenge yourself to use the brighter colors, but not that often. Okay, well, that's okay. Mostly the ones I end up using are Quinacridone Rose and Cobalt Teal. Ooh, Cobalt Teal. Ooh, is your Cobalt Teal um, very granulating? Most of the Cobalts are. I'm just curious. Every, uh, Liza, every time I go rummaging or estating or whatever, I pray to find paints and brushes. So do I. <laughs> Join the club! Um, uh, I remember you're open with dropping off all those tubes of paint. Yes, yes, yes. I, most of those I got at Roman sales. Um, you're, my nickname in my friend's Discord is Error More Than 404 Colors of Paint. <laughs> I sat and counted my tubes. Oh my God. I don't know how many I have. I've got a ton myself, so I can't. I'm not going to say anything about having too many or not enough or anything like that. Uh, I'm just going to say I've got more than I will probably ever go through. And for some reason, um, I still continue to buy paints. <laughs> Don't ask me why. Don't. Don't judge me. There we go. I'm just going to put something in the center of those. You can't read those anyways. And if you saw that, you wouldn't know that nothing that that isn't right. Ah, uh, whoo. Are we getting close? I think we're getting close. Did I say I was going to do anything else with this? I think he really kind of has, has uh, turned a corner. He really kind of uh, took a turn from being, let's see, I, I can do this. He took a turn from being something that was going to be okay and just kind of a representational piece. And that's fine. I don't have a problem painting like that. I do a lot of painting like that. But I think he turned into something that's kind of actually kitschy, kind of cool. Right, and I think what what started it was when I broke into this Payne's Gray, and I just want to make sure that's all dry. And that Payne's Gray started us down the path of really getting being able to put into these deeper shadows in here, and I think that really is kind of kind of helped out. Oh nope, more blue, less gray. That has really helped this guy out to, to really stand out a bit more. So I wasn't, I wasn't necessarily thinking along those lines when I started this guy, but I think he turned out really kind of neat. I'm glad, it, I'm glad it took that turn. There we go. I think with that, I'm probably happy enough with him to call it it done. Um, if I sit back and woo, do a little reflection here, uh, you think a uh, an addiction to paints is a good addiction? I'm with you. <laughs> I would do. I'm with you as long as they get used. Um, you can have extras that you never get to, as long as you continually use paint. I think it's fine. The minute it's not fine is when you go, oh, I have this addiction to paints and I and you stop using them. So <laughs> why do they call it Payne's Gray and not Jones Gray? What's the story behind it? Um, I think there is a Jones Gray. Uh, Payne, I believe, was the name of the gentleman that that gray color is named after. And I say gentleman because I'm sorry, but that's typically... Uh, what things were named after back in the day. There, I know there is a Davies Gray. I believe there is a Jones Gray. There are a couple of different grays out there. And Payne's Gray is, is pretty neutral, but it's got a bit of a blue tint to it. Davies Gray has a bit of a... It's a, it's a 
gray, but it's a warmer gray. It's got a bit of a browner tint to it. There, uh, there is a heather gray, heather's gray, uh, but all of the different grays have a slightly different tint to them and probably made famous by somebody with either that first or last name. Uh, and that's, that's how that got to be like that. Um, as I understand it, uh, I will admit I didn't do the super most amount of research on, <laughs> on, on Payne's Gray and Jones Gray. I, I, I did read that somewhere. Uh, it may have been on um, Handbrake website, something. I haven't looked at the site in forever. I might have it bookmarked somewhere. Uh, it's just a site that literally has the history of paints and pigments and will take you from, I don't know, 3000 BC up until current day to talk about different paints, different pigments, talk about paper. It's a huge resource. And I, and I quite honestly, I, I don't think I've looked at it in five years, but it, when I did, it was really cool. Um, looking at the robot though, I want to do a little bit of of a dive to see what I like, what I don't like. And while I'm doing that, I'm just going to fix a little issue here that I see. So, uh, some of the things I do like about this painting, um, I love the way this developed into a time where we have these big gradations of blue and gray and going into light and going into dark in these different areas. I think that turned out extremely cool. I'm, I'm so happy that, uh, that we did this with this, with the gray on here and, and the blue I'm okay with the, the two different blues that are on here. Uh, the cobalt blue and the ultramarine blue. Uh, I, I think they play well together. I don't think they play great together, but they were what I chose and I knew I was going to use those or pretty much knew I was going to use those before I started this. Um, I have used these two colors before and, and am okay using the two. There we go. I think that's going to help his leg not maybe stand out quite so much there. I just want to uh, want to give him a little color there in, in what maybe is a little shadow area. I, I like I like his head up here. It's dark over here and comes light and it's dark over there and it goes light. Gives his head a lot of dimension. I like the dark on both sides here and lighter as it comes to the front. Gives this a lot of dimension. Um, I don't know. I, I kind of like his arm, the way his arms have come out. Although now that I'm looking at it, one looks longer than the other. I don't know about that. Uh, and I love, I love his shoes. Look at his shoes. You can see the highlight all the way around. Fantastic. Uh, I love that. Maybe some of the things I don't like so much. Uh, I thought in my mind, this whole thing was going to be a bit easier to do. And it came out a little flat to me. It doesn't look, it doesn't have the roundness that I hoped it was going to have. Uh, I had hoped that this bit on the side, the shading on the side, and I can put a little bit more in there. I don't know that it's going to make that much of a difference. Um, I had hoped that that was going to provide quite a bit of the, the shape that I wanted. It obviously hasn't quite provided the way I wanted it to. Um, and that's, to me, is a bit of a disappointment. Would have liked that to, to be a bit better, a bit bolder, so we could see that curve on his chest here a little bit more. Perhaps that will help a little bit. I think it maybe helps a little bit. It doesn't help a lot of it. It might help if I actually got my color in the area where the color is supposed to go to, but that's maybe a different story. There we go. Uh, that might help a, a slight bit. Uh, I love, I love this, whatever this ear thing is up there. I think that's fantastic. 
Um, but that's it. That's my, that's my little robot. Oh, and I, I don't, his eyes are goofy. I knew his eyes were going to be goofy when I drew him on there, but, uh, I can live with that. Anyway, that, that's my robot. I do, I, he really does stand out off the page. Um, he's cute. He's adorable. What's not to like about him? <laughs> Thank you. Uh, Don, you think it looks great. Uh, sleep on it and add, uh, tomorrow with a fresh mind. I might do that. Uh, tomorrow, tomorrow I've got some other stuff to do. I've got, um, here, I'll show you this. This is so big. I've got to put it under here in pieces. Look, this is my, uh, this is my Bigfoot riding on a unicorn. <laughs> Look, it's, is that the most hysterical thing you've ever seen? That project's coming up. Uh, I'll probably do some of that on Twitch. Uh, if you want to see that, I've got a baseball mitt I'm trying to finish, a vulture head I'm trying to finish. I'm trying to paint the logo for my studio. Um, I've got this video for my supervision paints that I'm hoping to shoot tomorrow. I, I know what I want to do with it. I know how I want to do it. So I'm, I think I'm going to shoot this tomorrow and I'm hoping to have this out over the weekend. Um, everything else I think is down below links to social media, my webpage, which I badly need to update. Um, if you, um, if you're in the giving mood, there's uh, links down below to, uh, to donate to help keep the studio going. There's links to my coffee site. If you want to buy me a cup of coffee, there is. What is down there? I don't know what else is down there. And uh, uh, I want everybody to think about a way that I can give back to everybody who watches my videos all the time. I would love to have some kind of raffle or drawing or something uh, at the end of the month for people who are here all the time. I don't know how to do it. For, I don't want to do it just for people who are who show up on one uh, one video and and win something and and they're off and running and, and they have something and then the people who have been here all along don't get something. I don't want that to happen. So I, I need to figure a way to to not have that happen. If anybody has a way, uh, let me know. I'm I'm willing to, to look into that. I don't know. That's all I've got for you guys tonight. This was, a, like I said, this is a lot longer. Oh my Lord. I'm, I'm at almost two hours. This was a lot longer then I thought it was going to be. Thank you all so much for hanging with me. I very much appreciate it. I will be back here next Wednesday at 8 Pacific with something that hopefully is going to last about an hour <laughs> and not two hours. Uh, and then uh, this weekend, I'll, I'll, I'll probably be on Twitch a couple of times, maybe for uh, some shorter things and whatnot. But catch me over there. Other than that, we will see you guys later. Thank you so much for joining me in the studio this evening. I very much appreciate it. Have a great rest of your evening and great rest of your week. Bye-bye. <laughs>